It's time for the album review! And today's album review, we are going to be reviewing the Beatles' debut album, Please Please Me. I'm only seeking Before we get into the review of Please Please Me, I should probably tell you some facts about the album. The album was released on March 22, 1963, and was recorded on February 11, 1963. They recorded their first album in around 13 hours, so about the typical half uh, day, which really worked out for them in the end because this album sold a lot. It went gold in Canada and it went platinum in America and it also went gold in the United Kingdom which uh, means it sold pretty well and on the UK album charts it charted to number one. Now one thing you probably didn't know is that the Beatles had a very different discography all around the world. The UK albums were their main albums, but um, they had different albums, like uh, in the US they had Meet the Beatles, which in the UK was with the Beatles, and they kind of jumbled up the track and the tracks in the US version they added, and um, they released this album in America about a few years after this album had came out. Um, called The Early Beatles. It was basically a compilation of all their stuff with maybe a reshuffled playlist. Now for the review. I'll give you a hint of what I think of this album. I own two copies of it. Both in mono and stereo, of course. By the way, if you are planning on getting this album, get the mono version. But if you're not willing to spend a lot of money on the mono box set, which it only appears in, get the stereo version, because that is sold separately. One, two, three, four. Now, the first song on the album was a song called I Saw Her Standing There, which was the B-side to I Wanna Hold Your Hand. The song, weirdly enough, was credited to McCartney Lennon, which later on would become Lennon McCartney, so that's a little weird. They eventually switched the crediting on their second album with the Beatles. But let's not get off topic. I saw her standing there as great rocker, and any fans of 50s and 60s rockers will definitely appreciate this song. I give it a 9. Now let's go to track two, which is called Misery. Misery was again written by McCartney Lennon, and featured the first duet, you could say, for the Beatles, because both Lennon and McCartney sing on this song. When I saw her standing there, it was just Paul. You can tell that when they're singing it, they're pretty passionate, and are definitely singing it like they are having misery. Not an insult to the song, but just the emotion that they sung in the song. What else can I really say? It's a great song. I give it also a 9 out of 10. Third, uh, third song on the list is Anna Go To Him. Anna Go To Him, this is the first cover on the Beatles album. And I forget who it's originally by, but um... John stays faithful to this cover. He's the one singing, and like Misery, he shows a lot of emotion, and the way he sings, I like. I give this song about an 8.9 out of 10. Trying to be unique here. The next song we got is a cover of, some, of a song made by The Cookies called Chains. This time, it is not sung by either Lennon or McCartney. This time, it is sung by George. And for the first George song, he does pretty good. 
Of course, he would do better in later years with stuff like the inner light and here comes the sun and other stuff. But we're not up to that point yet. Anyway, this is a great song and just like Misery, George sings this with emotion. Ironically, this was actually sung by a female group and it's kind of ironic seeing that a male is covering this. Good song, I give it about an 8.5 out of 10. Track 4 is Boys, which is a cover of the Shirelles version, which this has more ironicity than Chains. It is sung by Ringo, but that's not the ironic part. The ironic part is, it's the female's stance or point of view of boys. Well, this is sung by a boy. Some people might think that Ringo was gay or something, but it's still a good song, I think. And even the, and this was first uh, Ringo's first song, and I think he did pretty good with it. Even though a lot of people like to bash Ringo's voice, saying how much they hate him, but. I don't mind Ringo's voice. I give this song about an 8.5 out of 10. Next one is Ask Me Why. Ask Me Why is the first uh, McCartney-Lennon song after a few covers. And uh, this song has a lot of harmonies. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a doo-wop song from the 50s. But still something the Beatles made. Like, their harmonies remind me of the 50s, but everything else is pure Beatles, I think. Like, take a look at this part of the song. I love you, cause you tell me things I want. Doesn't that sound kind of 50s-ish? I think it does. Anyway, I think this song is great, and one of the best on the album, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and give this album, I mean, not album, song, a 9 out of 10. It is very good. Next one is the title track, Please Please Me. And... This song has a lot of energy to it, which makes it great, and like Ask Me Why, the harmonies are great, and it's a very, very bouncy track, I'll say. I give it a 9.5 out of 10. Next track we have is Love Me Do, which I reviewed in The Beatles 1, but just to remind you, I think it's a great song, and... It was a good choice for their first single. Now, this version... Well, there's there's two different versions of Love Me Do. There's one version where Andy White, a session drummer, drums. But And then there's a one... Or a single version that was only released on the first few pressings of the Love Me Do single where Ringo drummed. And both of them are good, I'll say. I'll, uh tell you which one I prefer in another video. I give Love Me Do about an 8 out of 10. Next song is P.S. I Love You. Now, this one I'm not too crazy about, but it's not bad either. It's just a little underplayed, I guess, or underwhelming, I should say. It's a great song, though, and this was the B-side to Love Me Do. Great song, but very underwhelming. I give it about a 7.5 out of 10. The next track is another cover of a Shirelle song, which this time it's Baby It's You. And if I thought Ask Me Why sounded a lot like the 50s, this one sounds even more like the 50s. Then again, this is a cover song of a song that was in the 50s. So... Of course, it would still sound 50s. 
anyway, uh, the harmonies are great, and it's a Beatles cover song. It's great. Well, if it's another artist covering the Beatles, probably not, but the Beatles covering someone else. Yeah, that's good. I give this song a 9.5 out of 10. It's a great and beautiful song. Hey guys, wanna know a secret? The next song is Do You Wanna Know a Secret? Um, this one has George singing on it. And you know, it's probably my favorite song on the whole album. The way George sings is great. Here, here's an example of his wonderful singing. Do you want to know a secret? Do you promise not to tell? Whoa, whoa, whoa closer. Let me whisper in your ear. Say the words you long to hear. I'm in love with you. I give Do You Want to Know a Secret a 10 out of 10. Next track is A Taste of Honey. And this is probably my least favorite track on the album. It doesn't really flow together as well as some of the other songs. Doesn't mean it's bad, but it's like a P.S. I Love You. It's kind of underwhelming in a way. I give A Taste of Honey about a 7. With uh, A Taste of Honey comes a great song and probably my second favorite on the album, There's a Place. Paul McCartney and John Lennon sing very well together. And this song proves that they can sing good. It's my second favorite song on the whole album. It could be my first, too. And I give this song a 10 out of 10. Then, here's the final track. And George Martin, the Beatles record producer, intended this to be the last track because... John Lennon had a very bad, uh, I forget what it was, but he was sick, and he knew this voice, that after he, uh, recorded this, that his voice would give out, and he sung this very well. This song you've probably heard before, if you've watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you've heard this song, you've heard this play on the radio before, it's Twist and Shout. I mean, the guitar solo is great. I mean, listen. Well, shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Come on. The song is a great closer to the track, and I love it a lot. It's. The best rocker on here. I give it a 10 out of 10. This whole album is great. I recommend it. I give the whole album an 8.5 out of 10. It's great. It. I wouldn't say it should be the first Beatles album you listen to. But definitely if you're into the early 60s culture or the British Invasion. This is a great start to get into the British Invasion. And if you like some of the earlier Beatles stuff, this could be a good album to first listen to as well. Alright, see you guys later, and the next review will be on the Ramones' debut album. See ya!